Just when I decided to do a Sig Sauer group review of belt-fed blowback pellet pistols, Walther decided to bring out a Mark II of the PPQ. And it's belt-fed too. And welcome to AAR on Air. Today is a review of the new Walther PPQ, and I can't help feeling there's a bit of a battle of top trumps going on because the SIGs are predominantly 20 round belt fed, and this new PPQ is 21. So, without further ado, let's go straight to the walk around, shall we? First thing you notice, really is the weight. You really feel like you have a handful with its 860 grams. Normally the weight on a lot of modern polymer based replicas is on the top because the only real metal is the slide. Not so with the PPQ M2. You see it feels really well balanced and not at all top heavy because of its heavier designed magazine which I'll look at closer a little later. It is 180 millimeters long and all black. The top slide, as I've already said, is metal and the bottom is polymer, but high quality feel polymer. It doesn't have loud brash white lettering all over it and any branding is actually quite discreet and complements the gun rather than you having thinking, how am I gonna remove it? The sights, front and rear, are open and have bright yellow dots to aid sighting. The rears are actually adjustable by the use of a small flathead screwdriver. The adjustment is only left to right and no elevation, but to see a sight on the back as discreet and yet adjustable on this type of pistol is a nice touch and shows great attention to detail. Now, if you're not happy with the open sights, you always have the ability and option to drop on an external sighting aid of your choice using the rail on the underside. Below the slide is the safety, which has a familiar Beretta PX4 feel to it. But whilst this one has the slide on the safety lever, it isn't quite as stiff as the PX4. To operate it's a simple push down to drop it into safe and a push forward and lift to put it into fire. There is the usual red dot to indicate fire mode and the action can be done one handed with your thumb. Once it's in safe mode the trigger is completely locked. There is also a Glock-esque safety built into the trigger. Now any gun with multiple levels of safety gets my vote all day long. On the left hand side of the pistol is a lock open lever. This is normally a release lever to use after the gun has fired its last shot and then needs the slide releasing from the lock open position. Now whilst this actually will allow you to manually lock the slide open, it doesn't in fact lock open after the last shot has been fired because this is a belt fed system and I haven't seen one yet that can actually do a last shot lock open yet. After saying that, using the slide release and lock mechanism on the side does aid reloading the magazine back into the gun and adds very much to the realism. Then you work your way down to the grip, which is very comfortable for me and has a pattern to aid non-slip grip. The gun is really very comfortable to hold and feels part of you. The magazine release is in the usual place and when depressed, the magazine pops out to reveal that all new style of magazine. It is metal, hence that weight to the bottom of the gun and that nice balance. It also looks quite different to anything you've probably seen or used before. Walther called the Belfed system a chain magazine. 
I can't help thinking something got lost in translation somewhere, but it is pretty much irrelevant. It is a rubberized plastic belt that is built into the magazine to prevent it jamming or becoming misaligned or accidentally knocked out. This means you need to load your pellets in whilst it is in situ, which is very Huben K1 style. The pellets are loaded by depressing the indicated button on the side to allow you to drop your pellets face forward two at a time. Then rotate the magazine using your fingers and thumbs and drop in a further two and keep doing it until you've got all 21 loaded. Then return the button or loading port cover and you're all loaded up. Next you need to fit the 12 gram CO2. This is also a nice attention to detail point. You see, whilst it is a familiar hex key threaded bolt that is used to tighten and pierce the CO2, the tool to do this is part of that comfortable grip. Carefully push open the bottom of the grip until the back comes off to reveal the hex tool. Drop in your CO2, then simply tighten to pierce. Then return the hex key to the rear of the grip and click nicely back into place. Slide the bottom over and you're all good to go. So it's time to get this out at the 10 meter distance to see how this new design pellet blowback performs. Here goes. As always, these are not out and out target guns. They are replica guns and very collectible and highly addictive. They are great fun to use and are right at home shooting tin cans or knock down targets or the like. And yet the results from this weren't half bad, simply punching holes in paper. I suppose I couldn't finish this review without at least dropping it over the chrono. Well, Walther claim 105 meters per second, up to, which is around 345 in FPS speak. So, let's drop in some lightweight alloy pellets and let's see how far we can push it, shall we? Well, using 5.71 grain alloy pellets, it actually saw 408 feet per second, which is 2.1 foot pounds or 2.86 joules. So it easily achieves the claimed figures. Understated, actually. I would say you're going to get around 60 shots or three magazines per CO2, dependent on environmental conditions when you're using it. You know, I really do like this PPQ. I like the Beretta style safety. I like the great feel to the blowback. Who wouldn't like 21 rounds of pellet firing magazine to keep the fun going? And I do like innovative ideas from manufacturers. It feels nice in the hand, both in balance and weight. The adjustable rear sight is also a real bonus. Overall, this does have a top-end quality feel to it. Yep, I do like it, and I do like shooting this one. If you haven't tried the top-end CO2 pistols, you really should. 
How much is top end? Well, this one currently retails out at around £210 UK. And it feels like that sort of money in its quality feel. Well, Six Hour, you have a competitor out there, which is great for us because we're getting even more choice from quality manufacturers. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this review as well. If so, please give us the old thumbs up, subscribe, share and hit the old alarm bell if you haven't already. Thanks as always to Vector Air for getting hold of this for me to review. I really enjoyed it. And don't forget to join in with all the comments and chat, etc. Whilst you're there, don't forget to take a look at the merch. Well, that's it for this week. I've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and shoot safe. And hopefully, I'll see you next week. Hmm. Bye for now.